Go. Hi, I'm Sarah Everett Berkeley. Steve asked me to teach a math lesson, and I'm going to teach a really easy one. I have a math degree like Steve, but I'm going to teach a really easy one because this is what I teach a lot at my job. I'm going to teach how to solve basic linear equations, okay? Okay, so I'm going to start off with a nice easy one. Suppose you have 5x equals 60. And when solving linear equations, I have four questions I ask myself. Number one is, is the variable, meaning the letter, in this case, x, by itself. And what I mean by by itself is I want x touching the equal sign. No numbers over there. You can have all the numbers you want over here, like 30 and 7, I don't care. We just want x touching the equal sign. I just want x equals. If yes, you're done. If no, then figure out what number is bothering x or coming between it and its beloved equal sign. And in this case, x is not by itself because there is this 5 next to it. And that's not okay. x needs to be by itself. So, in this case, it is 5. Now the third step is, well, what is that number doing there? Like, why does it think it has a right to exist there? What is 5 doing? And by doing, I mean, is it being added? Is it being subtracted? Is it being multiplied? Or is it being divided? And then after that, you figure out what it's doing. You undo that. Meaning, do the opposite. So, in this case, what is 5 doing? If we had a plus sign, it would be being added, which we don't. If we had a minus sign, it would be being subtracted, which it's not. If we had a division sign, it'd be division. It's actually being multiplied. There's like this little invisible dot here. All right, x is being multiplied. Okay, is x by itself? No. What number is bothering x? 5. What's 5 doing? It's being multiplied. So we must undo any multiplication. So the opposite of multiplication is division, which in the Hapulid algebra we represent by division bars. I am dividing by 5, because that's the number that's bothering x. Who cares about 60? No one cares about 60. He's over here in number land. This is x land. We're good. Anyway, 5x divided by 5, this goes away. We got rid of x. And what's left? Multiplication kind of went away with division. Next is this letter. So without thinking, I'm just going to write this letter. Next is equals. I'm going to write in equals. And 5 divided by 60, I can go over and do to little long division land. And do 5 goes into 60. 5 goes into 6 once. 1 times 5 is 5. 6 minus 5 is 10. 2. Yay! X equals 12. And then I go back and repeat my steps. Is X by itself, meaning X equals. I have X equals number. Yes! Yes it is! That means I'm done. Yay! I'm done. Happy face. But now, yeah, this looks easy, right? Why do all these ridiculous steps for something so easy? All right. I'm going to think of a different one. What if I had x plus 5 equals 60? Why not? And it's the same thing, right? And what if I'm like, okay, I'm going to go divide both sides by 5. Because, hey, that's what I did last time, isn't it? Isn't it? But no, 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 because we forgot this step. So is x by itself? No. What number's in the way? Five. What is five doing? Well, what's five doing to the x? What are they doing? 
they're being added. Oh no, division's not gonna help addition. It's not gonna do anything. What undoes addition? What is the opposite of addition? Subtraction. So to solve this problem, we must be flexible like water. We must be aware of what that number is actually doing to the letter. So then we can be like, minus five, yay, minus five, yay. Math goes away, and I'm just gonna rewrite this thing without thinking, you went away, equal sign, and 60 minus five, I don't know what 60 minus five is. I'm just gonna write 60 minus five, because I don't even care. Okay, maybe I care a little. Maybe Mr. Chow cares. Okay, 60 minus five is 55. X equals five, 55. Is X by itself? Yes, it is, now we're done. Yay. All right, but now, you may still think, hey, that's really easy. I could have just thought in my head, 55 plus five is 60, duh. But algebra just gets harder and harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. And algebra is not meant for smart people who could just do things in their head. That's not what algebra is about. It's about taking a really difficult problem and making it so anyone can do it, regardless if you know a lot of mental math or not. Regardless if you're a human calculator, algebra is a system for you to do math. And it's about, and what it does is it slows up your thinking so you can tackle challenging problems. So we're gonna do another one. I'm gonna have three X plus five equals seven. And so, oh no, we have two numbers bothering X. We have the three, and we have the five, and we must get rid of them both. But the question is, which do I get rid of first? And here's how I like to think of it. Well, there's a very good mathematical explanation. I like to think that X is this magical treasure box. Because if you think of a variable, that's just what it is, a box. And it's in this video game, and there's these different like ninja bosses surrounding it. And this ninja boss is protecting it because he's really close. And this ninja boss is further away. So when you're playing a video game and you're trying to get to the end, the closer you want to, you start defeating the bad guys in the beginning. And then as you get closer and closer, the bad guys get tougher and tougher and tougher until the last boss is the worst. Anyway, this is our little treasure. This is the boss guarding him. This is the boss that's further away. You want to start with the, the bad guys that are further away. You kill them off first before you get to the treasure. So is X by itself? No. Who is bothering it? Three and five. We're going to deal with five first because it's kind of further away. All right, what's the, what is five doing? It's being added. What's the opposite of addition? Subtraction. So I'm going to be like minus five. Minus five. What you do to one side, you must do to the other side. That's what equals is all about. If this side gets minus five, that side must be minus five. Anyway, I'm gonna bring down three X because we still haven't defeated him. These guys go all the way. And now I bring down an equal sign. And now I have the daunting task of subtracting five from seven. Oh, that's two. Yay. Now, now that we've dealt with the five first, now I can attack this. All right, is X by itself? No, this number three is here. Does that mean I minus three? Is subtraction, will subtraction undo whatever this is? This is multiplication. How do we undo multiplication? Does subtraction, is subtraction the opposite of multiplication? No, we must do division because this is multiplying. Anyway, we undo division. I mean, we undo multiplication and everyone cancels. And we have a fraction that we're just gonna leave like this. Who cares what it is? I don't care. Because we got X by itself. Now this I have a little ninja story, but what you're really doing is we've all known the order of operations. You know, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, is that what it is? Probably. When you're solving for an equation, you're actually doing the opposite of PEMDAS, because you're going from something that equals to the original problem. So you're actually doing PEMDAS backwards. 
So that's why we actually do addition and then multiplication. At least when you're moving stuff to both sides. When you're doing opposite operations, which we are, you know, figure out what it's doing, undo it. That's doing the opposite of stuff. And so we would be moving up backwards from DOS, which is very confusing. So I just like to think about a story about ninjas. All right, anyway, now to get to harder linear equations, because maybe someone could still do that in their head. Probably, I don't care. Um, I'm gonna erase this. 2x plus 4x minus five equals 31. All right. Oh my God, I got like four numbers and two letters here, oh no. When doing algebra, the first thing you wanna do is read it out loud. And, if, and I'm gonna be like, okay, you got 2x plus 4x minus five equals 31. Okay, 2x plus 4x. You can actually do that. What is 2x plus 4x? I mean, if I have two x's and I get another four x's, I guess I married a lot of people. Altogether, that would give me six x's. These things become six x. And in case you're wondering, this step, it's fancy math name, is combining like terms. So all my x's come together to be 6x, and they go away. No one cares about them. And without thinking, I'm just going to mindlessly write stuff. Ooh, look, a minus sign. Minus. Ooh, what's that number? 5. What's that? That's that symbol. All right. Don't even think about it. When 80% of algebra is writing the same thing over and over and over again. Because algebra is about doing hard math problems. And math, hard math problems are hard because you think about a lot of crap in your head. Algebra is designed to deliberately slow you down so you can think about one concept, do it. Then do the next concept. Then do the next concept. And focus on doing each concept accurately. Otherwise, you're prone to make errors, which eventually we all make lots of math errors. So just think this is the math. I'm combining like terms. 2x plus 4x is that. I'm just going to mindlessly copy everything. All right, I have this. Is x by itself? Alas, it is not. I have a minus five. I'm gonna undo that, I'm gonna add five. I'm gonna add five. Okay, now I'm gonna bring down this thing. I'm not even looking. This goes away, five equals 31 plus five. Okay, I have to think now. Okay, that's 36. Take as much time as you want to add 31 plus five because that's all you're really doing here and that's okay. All right, now I'm back to 6x equals 36. Is x by itself? Do I just x and the equal sign? No, the evil 6 is bothering it. What is the 6 doing? Is it being added, subtracted, multiplied? Oop, it's being multiplied. I'm gonna undo that with my fancy division fraction. And I'm gonna divide by 6 and divide by 6. And it's like, yo, we went away. And now I have x, this symbol, and 36 divided by 6. And you can always use a calculator. Either way, it's six. Is x by itself? Yes, it is. We are done. Okay, I'm gonna come up with a better equation now to do this. Okay, hi. So what if you're doing that in your head and you're like, oh, I can do all this stuff in my head. It's easy, okay. Well, because in the real world, you can't do all algebra in your head. So I'm gonna do another one. Okay, so I'm gonna be like 3.2x minus seven plus 4.9x minus 21.04 equals 12. It's already crazy. <laughs> I know, yeah, but I mean, it's not like I can do this in my head. And I've done algebra problems like this, harder ones. Algebra, the same steps that allow you to do that easy stuff can allow you to do this. So first step, combine like terms. Okay, I have something with an x. I have something else with an x. Okay, I can add them together. 3.2 plus 4.9, well, 3.2, 4.9, I can add, yay for me, and that becomes like 8.1x. Okay, I got rid of that crap. Now these are numbers, they can combine together. 
negative 7 and negative 21. That'll be negative 28.04. I suppose we could have just cleared the decimals first, but that would have defeated the, my point in this problem, which is algebra can enable you to do difficult problems. I really doubt anyone could solve this in their head. Maybe they could. I don't care. Anyway, now I'm like, okay, x is not by itself. This annoying thing that I'm not going to even read is bothering it. Okay, be gone, annoying thing. You're using your evil subtraction power. I'm going to use my awesome, like, addition power because that will undo you, evil thing, that I'm not going to even read because you're so intimidating looking with your fancy decimal points. I'm just going to write down symbols and be like, you're gone, you're gone forever. Okay, and now I'm going to write down 8.1x, which is another evil thing, but I'm dealing with this evil thing right now. Now I can add decimals, zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero, right? Oh no, there should be a four here. Oh my bad. Let's see, four, 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 four. I almost made a mistake. Four, zero, 10, and nine. And where did my decimal point go? All right, it goes in here after the 90.04. 90 90 4, 0, 10, 9. Decimal point. Anyway, evil thing multiplying by x. I don't even care what it is. How do I undo multiplication? My weird division fraction thingy. I'm going to write the evil thing that's there. I'm not even going to think about it, but I'm going to write the exact same thing here. Are you the same? Good. All right. Technically, if you want to, you could even say this is whatever 90. 0.04 divided by 8.1 is. You could. That's fine. Or you can make a calculator deal with it for you, not even deal with evil things. But I'm going to deal with it because I can. Why not? All right, you're going to move this decimal place over and move that decimal place over. I can do that. 80 and 90 can't go. 81 to 90? Oh, yeah, I can go. Once. Yeah, I know, we're out of time. Don't worry. Another ones. Ooh, bring up the decimal point one. Ooh, 130. How many times does 81 go to 130? Once. Oh, look. Anyway, it's gonna round off to <laughs> x equals one, one, <laughs> point one, one, and we'll just keep it around there. All right. Thank you very much.